all right guys welcome back to the 10th tutorial so we are moving really fast aren't we all right so uh, as i said in this tutorial i will be talking about structures right so as i told in the previous one the major drawback of an array is that you cannot store different data types together right so structure comes in and solves that particular problem let me just write define a structure and then i'll explain structure is defined with the keyword struct right struct Struct stands for structure. You can give any name. Now suppose you are working in a company, right? And your boss wants you to, you know, make a program to take the details of, say, a few employees and display their uh, salary or something like that, right? So what we can do is we can just name our structure employee curly braces and a semicolon. That's the syntax of a structure, right? Struct followed by the name of the structure, the curly braces and the semicolon at the end. So in here we can declare uh, the different data types which we want. We can say employee ID. We can use an array for the name of the employee, right? We can use another array for the uh, name. We can use another array for the position. Maybe uh, thirty. Maybe is a supervisor or something like that. So that's uh, what we can do here so as you can see we can have different data types you can have float you can have anything you can have float for maybe the salary of the employee and all that right so this is the basic uh, structure right so now what we have just defined is the basic uh, you know blueprint of an of, a, of something right so whatever we make that is going to have all of these uh, variables right so that is called a structure variable now again there are two ways to define a structure variable one is we can do that right here employee one maybe and employee two like that or we can just go ahead and you know we can just make an array of say 50 employees or something or well, let's take two two employees for this example right so this is the first way to define structure variables now what this is actually is uh, just like saying integer i when we say integer i two bytes of memory is reserved for that variable right so similarly when we say employee one there will be two plus fifty plus thirty this eighty two plus four a float is four bytes so basically eighty six bytes of memory will be reserved for employee one and again similarly eighty six bytes will be reserved for employee two it's just like saying integer i so integer i expects only one integer value whereas employee two here expects these values right now there's one more problem with structures what that is we cannot initialize the value here we cannot just you know give it some value like 678 or something like that that's not possible we just define uh, we just declare the various data types which employee can have right so now to access those uh, to access those variables what we need to do is we need to use emp dot uh, emp one dot name right so that's how we use it the dot operator right dot operator is used for accessing structure variables all right so now uh, i want to ask for the details right enter the details for employee one now since in this case i have only two employees so i am going to i am not going to use a loop right so i'll go ahead i'll say and l on name again as as i said we can use gets for the name so emp1 dot name right so for using gets we need con io dot h right so let's go ahead and write that con io dot h perfect so uh, semicolon should come at the end there we go again we'll go ahead we'll write uh what next new line first and then maybe id id so this we can just take it directly as it is an integer so we can write emp1 dot id and you can go ahead and you can take the other values to the position and salary if you wish right so that's the basic uh, operation which you can do now again uh, i can just copy the same code i can put it again for the second employee if you have uh, you can you know you can make a array of employees if there are 10 20 employees and you can again add a for loop uh, with the this condition right emp i dot name and all that so that you do at your own right 
right now I am going to do it for the second employee so I'll refer to as emp2.name and emp2.id right after taking the values what I'm going to do is I'll just display the results so here's what you entered so go ahead type first employee and a name so after the name what emp one dot name again this is not the proper way it should be emp one one that's right uh, again i can go ahead i'll say slash t id emp one dot id right you can go ahead and write everything else for the employee too also i'll just go ahead and save it employee let's see if it runs properly or not okay that's the problem what we did is we wrote emp id right so we'll have to write emp id now instead of changing emp id in all the places we can just go ahead and we can remove emp right here right so name id so there we go there's here's what you entered i mistakenly pressed enter here so it did not took the name right so here's the de details which i entered right so our code is working just fine now uh suppose your boss wants you to you know uh, write a function to calculate their salaries or something so you can just go ahead and make a function uh, called salary you can use this salary now since we have defined everything outside main so everything in the structure is global right so that means you can operate it anywhere you want okay so you know you can go ahead you can take the salary you can print the salary you can calculate the uh, whatever the basic and hr whatever uh, is there in that i don't actually uh, know exactly so uh, that's what i mean you can go ahead you can create various functions using the structure uh, elements and you can perform various operations right so that's basically what a structure actually is now i told you there are two ways of defining these variables right one is you can do that here which makes them global the other way is to uh, define them inside the main for that you need to again write struct or uh, the name of the structure which is employee and emp1 or maybe 3 right so it's similar to declaring integer a right struct employee emp3 so what happens again is emp3 is allotted 86 bytes in the memory right so that's the second way to declare it now you can also have functions here in the structure you know like a salary instead of declaring it outside you can define it uh, you can declare it right here but again it's highly recommended defining them outside the structure right also make sure you don't have conflicting names like this okay so uh, when we define a function like this oh wait this will be better uh, understandable by the class concept okay i'll tell you that in the next one so that's basically what a structure is it's a collection of various data elements but there's one problem associated with the structure which is obvious you know i can access these elements from anywhere i want there is no uh, way to hide the data now you know in the real world the data is very sensitive right you cannot just go ahead and uh, publicly allow anyone to access this data right we need some sort of privacy to you know actually hide the data and uh, to keep it safe right but structure does not provide us that now that is where the class comes in right so that's basically it for structures uh, we have used everything uh, as i said arrays we have used uh, we can define functions for the structure elements uh, which i want you guys to do i won't tell you that all right so that's how you access the structure elements with the dot operator uh, now that's basically what a structure is it's a heterogeneous uh, collection of various data types it's basically a way to represent any real world object right you suppose if i am talking about a fan so i can you know write int number of wings and uh, the name of the company and uh, maybe you know the functions for rotating it and stopping it and all that just uh, an example you can write it for a hotel bookings reservations number of rooms all that so that's the basic advantage you can actually collect uh, create the basic blueprint of a real world entity right now since that uh, as i said there are privacy concerns uh, other than that structure is basically uh, very useful but 
because of the privacy thing uh, the class has uh, taken care of that so struct is not used much except in data structures of uh, which you don't need to worry about right now so that's it about structures uh, let me tell you a bit about another thing that's called union right a union i won't actually write any code for that just i'm telling you the uh, what union actually is because we don't use it anymore since it's there i think you should you guys should at least know about it right so what's the difference between structure employee and union employee to structure employee actually um, there is no basic difference between them the only difference is that when we uh, create a structure variable right so it reserves as i told it reserves 86 memory locations right but in case of union it will reserve the maximum memory size which is there in these elements so if i declare a union of uh, employee so when i create emp1 it will only store the maximum size which is 50 in this case so it will only store 50 bytes in the memory right so what the problem in union is that you cannot access any element together right you can only access individual elements one at a time because only one element is stored in the memory at a time because it's not a uh, saving memory for all the elements right so that's the basic difference between a union and a structure a structure stores all the elements separately in a memory whereas union stores all the elements in the maximum size so you cannot access two elements simultaneously right so that's the basic difference between union and a structure union is no longer used these days but since it exists so i thought you guys as well should as well should know about it so that's about it for this tutorial guys in the next one i'll tell you about the class concept which is the most important part of c so go ahead try out a few codes i have already attached them in the sheet and see you guys in the next one then